the Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition to start debate. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and it's a pleasure to rise here and talk to this motion. It's a while since we broached the, the topic of whistleblowing in this legislature a few years ago. It was a, a topic of uh, great discussion, and of course, the history of whistleblowing on. Uh, on the island dates back to a, a policy within government which was established in 2015 and which in the first couple of years of its existence had no, not a single complaint come forward. And at that time we were the only province without legislation to protect whistleblowers and of course policy offers nothing like the same sorts of protections to whistleblowers as legislation does. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. So, in 2017, the administration of the day brought forward the Public Disclosure um, Information and Whistleblower Protection Act, which is the legislation we have today. Uh, it's comparable in many ways to the legislation we ha that exists in other provinces, but it's also missing some important pieces and uh, I remember in debate on this important bill bringing forward amendments from the side of the House that we would like to have seen to strengthen the bill but unfortunately were not incorporated. So I'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of the legislative and policy situation that we that currently exists here on Prince Edward Island because legislation is one of the parts of uh, ensuring that you have protection, sufficient protections for people to be able to come forward without fear of reprisal. But the other aspect is a more nuanced one, something which is perhaps not so black and white, and that's the culture of the organization within which uh, whistleblowing is either encouraged or discouraged. And so there are a couple of elements to this motion which I look forward to sharing my thoughts, but also to hearing other members of this Legislative Assembly and, and their attitudes, their concerns, their feelings about where we sit in Prince Edward Island in terms of offering those supports and offering that safety so that people within our public service feel comfortable, they feel safe, they feel secure bringing forward concerns. And I want to start my more formal remarks, Speaker, by directly addressing the public employees across the public sector here in our province. And I first of all want to say, say absolutely categorically that we greatly value the work that you do every day in whatever department you, you do your work in order to improve the lives of islanders. And across our public sector, whether that be in healthcare or education or any of the other departments which provide public services to the citizens of this province, it is the public sector and the workers and the employees in that public sector who are providing those services, and we appreciate that. We understand what an important and critical job that is, and sometimes what a difficult job that is. And they deserve our support, and they deserve our accolades. So thank you to every single public servant of this province. I want to particularly thank those civil servants who do speak out when they see mismanagement, they see a toxic work environment, they see injustice or they see islanders perhaps being left behind or not served properly. And that must be an extraordinarily difficult decision to make. One that, of course, carries a lot of personal risk for that employee. You could be a long time, well, maybe you're a new employee, but you could be a long time employee of the public service. And typically whistleblowers, if you look at the data, um, they tend to be more senior, more seasoned um, employees with a lot of experience, far more aware of the culture and the organizations in which they live. Those are typically the people who do bring forward concerns. And of course, the further you are in an organization, the higher up you are, the longer you have been there, the greater the risks. So I want to particularly thank those who do come forward to point out the risks that are inherent in our system and for the, for the personal risk that they take in doing that. We 
absolutely should be populating our public service with those kinds of workers, people who are taking steps to protect the greater good, even if that means putting their own personal situation at risk. I look at whistleblowing as a sort of early warning system against corruption. And in order for whistleblowers to come forward and, and to do so comfortably and safely, there's a couple of things that, that need to be in place in order for them to do this without fear of reprisals. I've already mentioned that there, there are, I think, two aspects to this. First is legislative, and we now have a whistleblowing act here on Prince Edward Island. I think weak though it is, it is in place now, and it does offer some protections for those who are brave enough to come forward. The other thing is, is a dysfunctional culture which dissuades people from doing so, and that's a much more insidious and difficult thing to deal with. And of course, in all issues of whistleblowing, and we see it across the world, actually, and I'll talk a little bit about where Canada stacks up against other countries when it comes to protection of whistleblowers. It's not pretty, spoiler. Um, where there is a consistent contradiction, and that is where often the truth tellers are punished, and those who are wrongdoers often continue on without impunity. And we've seen that here on Prince Edward Island. Whistleblowers come forward, they lose their jobs, they are penalized. Um, sometimes it's very overt, and sometimes it's more subtle, the ways that they are punished. And that has an extraordinarily chilling effect on a culture. And when you do not have a culture that encourages people to come forward and tell the truth about, about shortcomings in the system in which they work, that creates threats to public health. It creates threats to public safety and environmental health and, and, and to organizational accountability. All of those things are threatened when people within the organization are not encouraged to come forward to speak the truth when things are not going well. So we must protect those who tell the truth. And experts in the field tell us that Canada has some of the worst protections for whistleblowers in, in the entire world. And we're often sort of held up as an object of international ridicule because of the the laxity of our legislation. Federally, for example, the, the, the uh, I can't think what it's called, but the, an act that was brought into place in 2007, in the first 10 years of existence of that whistleblowing protection, there were eight cases came forward in 10 years. Only one of those cases actually had the stamina to get to the end of the process, and they lost. So in 10 years of that whistleblowing um, legislation being in place, it produced precisely zero results. So we have a long way to go. We have, and of course, I, I mentioned earlier that Prince Edward Island was the very last province to enact whistleblower legislation. And in my estimation, we could have done a stronger job, particularly when you're not going first. When you, of course, when you go first with a piece of legislation, there are certain things that one has to um, imagine, I want to say guess at, but that's not the right terminology, but you're, you're charting new ground. But when you're the 10th province to come forward with a piece of legislation, you can look at the other jurisdictions and you can pick and choose what you like. And you should be able to bring forward the strongest piece of legislation of any province. And we sure as anything didn't do that. Whoops, I almost slipped up there, <laughs> speaker. So we have a history here on Prince Edward Island of being late to the game, of having a policy which didn't protect employees, and of uh, a piece of legislation that could be significantly improved. The Premier has said repeatedly that any civil servant should absolutely speak up when they have concerns, and I agree with him, they absolutely should. But the reality is that many of those civil servants don't feel safe to do that. And if they don't feel safe, they will find it far more difficult to speak out. They often fear that if they do speak out, they're going to face reprisals. 
and reprisals, as I said earlier, can take many forms. It's not, it's not just getting fired, although we have seen that. We've seen that in our province. Um, we've seen it very recently with a couple of deputy CAOs in Charlottetown. Um, but there can be other things as well. It can be uh, getting passed over for a promotion or a new position. It can be consistently getting undesirable shifts or not getting vacation requests approved. Um, it, it, it takes many, many forms, but discrimination is sadly rampant. It's not just in our province, of course, and I don't want to suggest that, but we're no different. And indeed, when the leader of the province says that any civil servant should absolutely speak up when they have concerns, we are hearing in our office consistently from civil servants that they don't feel safe speaking out. And it's really important that we, ta that we firstly acknowledge that that is indeed the case. If we have civil servants, and this is not just one or two isolated incidents, this is, this is a series of concerns that have been brought to our attention repeatedly over the years that we've been in office as the official opposition. It's a culture of silence as the motion suggests. And the first thing that we must do to combat that is to acknowledge it, that, acknowledge that this is a problem and to talk about it. And the first operative clause is exactly asking for that. So the kind of workplace environment that we have is critical. And when it's unhealthy, it will lead to employees, firstly, not coming forward with concerns, but also what a stressful situation to be in if you're watching wrongdoing, knowing that the right thing to do is to put your hand up and report this to somebody and, and not feeling safe to do that. What an extraordinary stress that must place on workers. And, and by the way, this motion is, is specifically about public service workers and within the public service. But of course, the same sorts of problems exist in the private sector as well. But this motion is specifically about the public service, which is why I'm uh, I'm restricting my remarks to that, but I don't. I want to make sure that people are aware that this is not something which is just present in the public service. That it is absolutely present in the private sector as well. And that sort of environment, that unhealthy environment of, of a lack of safety, a lack of uh, a lack of um, feeling secure to do the right thing, um, leads to employees disengaging from their work, leaving their work, perhaps. It leads to vacancies in government jobs, and ultimately, uh, that of course leads to a reduction in the, both the quantity and the quality of public services that we offer to islanders. This is something which has a profound, real, practical input on the day-to-day -day lives of the citizens of this province. And it really troubles me that the hard-working public servants who are reaching out to our office and are, are raising their concerns, they're doing that anonymously or they're seeking anonymity if our office wants to speak about them publicly. That's a real red flag that there are problems here. We see it in healthcare, we see it in education, we see it in other departments as well. Anonymity is the first big red flag that suggests that there is a lack of safety and that the people who are the truth tellers, the people who we need to hold up, the people who we need to protect are uncomfortable or unable to bring forward their concerns. It's a clear sign of people being afraid of reprisal. But I'm concerned about the substance of the concerns they're bringing to our office. It's not just the fact that they are seeking anonymity and they're disinclined to bring forward those concerns through appropriate channels that the act, um, the mechanisms in the act allow. The fact that they're reaching out to the official opposition anonymously is a real problem, but it's the nature of the concerns that they are bringing which is perhaps equally disconcerting. They often involve issues of public services not being provided appropriately, or worse, issues that could negatively affect the health and well-being of the public. We see all of these things, we hear about all of these things on a regular basis in our office. And that's why it's so critical that we create and promote a culture where people feel really safe to raise these concerns where they feel, or even better, where they know that they will be supported when they come forward with these concerns. Workplace cultures are tricky things. They get established over a length of time, but they're not unmalleable. They can change. 
they're often a reflection of the values of the people who are heading those organizations and workplaces. And it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of dedicated and continuous effort in order to ensure that island public servants have a workplace where they not only feel comfortable coming forward with their concerns, but where ministers and senior leadership will actually listen to them and take the appropriate action to address those concerns. There has to be, uh, there has to be an authenticity, there has to be a sincerity within the culture, within the environment, within the workplace, so that people feel comfortable and free and secure coming forward. And that means that leaders need to take responsibility. That's part of what leadership is. We don't need ministers who, in, in response to criticism about their performance, for example, if that's what's coming forward from a whistleblower, allege that that's an attack on civil servants. That's unhelpful. Unfortunately, we, we hear that all the time on this side of the House, and it almost never is. It's a criticism of the ministers and the senior leadership who are failing to provide the adequate leadership and the direction that our civil servants expect and deserve in their jobs. You can appreciate why civil servants feel that there's a toxic culture when they get thrown under the bus for public convenience by the very people that they answer to. This motion, Motion 101, calls on government to launch a comprehensive education campaign to inform civil servants of their legal rights and their protections. And we need to ensure that workers, of course, are fully aware of their rights and all of the avenues that they have to raise their concerns. For example, we have a new ombudsperson office. Fantastic. Once again, the last province in Canada to institute one. But we have one, and that's fantastic. And that needs to be made clear to all of the public servants here in this province that that office is a place where you can go safely in order to raise these concerns as one of many uh, one of many avenues that are available to you but i don't know what efforts government has made to inform public servants that this new office even exists this motion also calls on government to develop safe pathways for workers to raise their concerns and we know that the substance of those concerns are very often extraordinarily significant. For example, some of the concerns we've heard in our office are about the quality of services that could affect the safety and the well-being of islanders. Really fundamental things. As I said at the very beginning, I look at whistleblowing as a sort of early warning protection within, within uh, the environments and the workplaces that, that we work. And, and if that is taken away, we lose that early warning system that could perhaps prevent some serious problems from, from building up and, and exposing themselves later. Workers should not have to rely on measures of last resort like going to the media or public communications to ensure that ministers and senior administrators take their concerns seriously. It should be something that's done in-house. And, ex and it's extremely worrying that this is the environment that this government is providing for its civil servants. I really hope in debate of this motion that we hear examples from this government of things that they are doing to improve the working conditions for island public servants. I really hope we hear in debate on this motion that this government is going to take steps to educate public servants to let them know what needs to be done, to strengthen the Whistleblower Act perhaps, to make sure that the Ombudsperson Office is well advertised, if I can put it that way, within the public service, and that most importantly, the ministers, the deputy ministers, the leaders in this organization, the, the provincial government of Prince Edward Island, will create an atmosphere, a workplace, an environment where every single public servant feels safe, they feel secure, and they feel able to tell the truth if that's necessary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.